Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm excited to share with you my imitative scud pattern that utilizes Semperfly straggle legs. For the thread, I'm using Semperfly's Nano Silk 30 denier in olive, and then that matches up nicely to the Semperfly straggle legs in lichen. For the back of this bug, I'll be utilizing Togen's Sow Scud Back. This is in Sow Bug color. Really cool little stuff. For the wire ribs, I'm using UTC Gold. Uh, this is ultra wire in small size. And then for the tail and the breather section up front there, I'm using Nature Spirit Ostrich Hurl. And uh, this is a tan color. And then I did find these little iridescent fibers out of a, a bow just at a dollar store. You can utilize whatever you like for that, but it gives a nice sheen. And then for the underbody, some uni stretch in white. It just helps build up your base so you're not going through an entire spool of thread uh, to get, uh, get the shape of this going. For the bead, we're using Togan's glass beads in an orange silver line color and pairing that with Togan's competition scud hook in size 10. And then with this uni stretch, you'll use it just as you would uh, any other thread loaded up in your bobbin and then tie that in, trimming away the excess. And then as you get up to this glass bead, uh, take some extra care to make sure that you get the underside of that bead. We'll clean it up a little bit here, but you want the top of that orange to shine through your material. It imitates a pregnant scud, which in my mind, I view it like a, a trout would uh, if you're having meat and potato dinner. That's their staple. That's the normal scuds. And then these pregnant scuds is that little bit of gravy that you're going to uh, tempt them with. Irresistible in a lot of cases. They get a few extra calories, I'm sure, from the little pregnant uh, egg sac that these scuds are carrying. And then once you're happy with that profile, uh, give it a whip finish, trim that uni stretch away, and uh, clean up any errant fibers there. And then now you'll come in with um, your nano silk. Um, just get that started at the front of this fly. Um, doesn't have to be perfect, but you're just going to work its way back uh, to the tail end of this fly. Majority of this body we're going to be covering with the straggle leg material, but you do want to make sure that that thread goes uh, underneath that glass bead so that the, um, the orange top portion of it does shine through. And at this point, you can add your UTC Ultra Wire. Again, this one I'm using is size small, gold color. And then down for the tail section, I'm going to pick about four of these, uh, these strands of ostrich feather. These ones are tan in color, and uh, that's as close to an imitative representation as I can find. Um, looking at a lot of video footage and photos of these little scuds, and uh, this stuff works really good for that. You want to save the barbed ends that you pull off the, the feather for the front of this as they're really um, stiff and curled and they look so much like the little breather feelers that these scuds have. And then with this scud back material, you want to round the corners of it a little bit and then just nip at it so that it looks a little bit frayed. And we're going to add this to those um, tail feathers and it's going to give it a really cool little profile it's going to move very lifelike in the water and that's just going to go on the top side there you want to be uh, extra cautious just to position this nice and centered um, do a couple of loose wraps to get it started that looks pretty bang on right there and then you'll go and pull that back give it a wrap in front of it and that's going to start our nice scud back found uh, these little iridescent um, fibers they came in uh, birthday uh, bow there's uh, some pearl ones some purple ones just at a dollar store so look around you can be very resourceful but it gives, does give you a very nice uh, pearl underbody on that scud back and then take maybe about 
8 to 10 inches of the Semperfly straggle leg material and just capture that in at the uh, the tail end and uh, put that away uh, in the material keeper uh, and we'll work at that later. You're going to want to grab these four fibers of, um, of ostrich feather and uh, get those barbed ends standing upright, tie that in to secure it, work your way back, that looks pretty good there. And then here's my little mono eye trick, you take some um, 20 pound monofilament, 30 pound, 40 pound, whatever you have, get a little section in your bead tweezers, trim away that excess you want, maybe just a couple of centimeters um, hanging out at each side, take your lighter, singe these up, they will uh, they'll curl back towards the, uh, the tweezer and give you a nice round tiny little mono eye. Uh, they do get a little bit of like a burnt look to them as well so they look super lifelike and um, while they're in the bead tweezer it's much easier to capture them with your thread. Do a couple of wraps to get them just onto the hook and then you can kind of get them straightened out and centered and then I like to do some figure eights secure these very well um, this nano excuse me with this nano soak you can do um, some very tight wraps without worrying about it breaking and that'll lock it in really nice a couple of whip finishes there get that uh, bobbin out of the way and there you go there's the underbody of this it's so now the fun part we're going to make it look buggy um, wrap this straggle leg material upwards um, and as you uh, see in you can just sweep those fibers down I find working with this material helps if you wet your fingers um, and kind of position those fibers uh, the way that you like them and then once you get up to that glass bead we do want the top portion of that to shine through so we'll just do a couple of figure eights okay. on the underside of that bead and then continue building up your body let's get a little bit more bulk going in there and then you'll want to taper off the closer that you get to the head. I like wrapping these eyes with just a couple of wraps, one uh, across and then come back and that way so that you get a lot of that bugginess in around the eyes as well. These scuds have very, very small, tiny eyes that are kind of embedded in the um, right near the, the head of, of the, the bug. And then secure that straggle leg material a few wraps behind, a few wraps in front. This olive color is great because it blends in so well and a 30 denier does not build up much bulk so you can really get that secure and then carefully with your razor scissors or micro tip scissors nip the strand of that straggle leg away and then here we're going to primp and preen all these fibers give it a little haircut as well just the top make sure that none of those errant fibers are sticking up it's going to make it so much easier when you lay the scud back uh, down and in front. That's looking pretty good right there. So now we're going to carefully fold um, the iridescent underbody, the tinsel, forward as well as that scud back forward and make sure that it's very centered. This is critical uh, to perfectionists like me. You can get a couple of loose wraps on it and then make sure that that's happy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply some Golf Classic Resin to that scud back. Just going to help keep it in position. And then as you wrap your wire up, it's going to give it some really cool 3D looking um, space. That looks very happy like that. And then what I like to do is in front of those eyes, you can kind of use them as a thread guide to make sure that that, um, that scud back stays in place and you get your thread locked in there. Um, with a whip finish that's nice and secure that's not going anywhere so we'll like get that uh, resin going on this pattern I'm just going to talk uh, about how to fish this um, as effectively as possible so I do prefer um, a clear camo intermediate line uh, there's a lot of great manufacturers out there um, I've got scientific anglers and that stuff is great it uh, casts like a dream minimal um, memory in it so it doesn't coil up on you and uh, yeah it does the trick for fishing scuds you can as, as well use a 
type uh, one three sink. Uh, usually you'll be fishing these any you know any waters any shoals that are less than say 12 feet uh, so you just got to time your sink rate and get these uh, scuds down to the appropriate depth these patterns in particular are unweighted but you can as well uh, add a lead um, under wrap uh, before you tie in that uh, that uni stretch underbody and that'll help get this pattern down but if you use the right um, the right fly line, uh, you can get all different types of depths depending on what uh, water column you're fishing. So once you have a thin layer of that classic um, resin on, just give it a good zap with a UV light. Here I'm using Togan's UV light. They work like a charm. And then that looks pretty happy. We're going to go ahead and wrap this, uh, this wire, UTC wire. Um, so just with your bodkin, get those tail feathers up and under there. You'll want to do one wrap underneath. It'll help kind of lift that tail section and start you off in the right direction. And then near the tail section, you want to get these wrapped a little bit closer. And then you'll um, make them more sparse and some bigger sections around this, this middle. And as you go, you'll kind of figure out some techniques that work best for you. I like uh, having my bodkin in, in one hand and then holding the wire in the other hand while I just free up some of those uh, straggle legs. And um, you can pick them out afterwards as well, but I do find this method helps get a lot of that bugginess uh, and legginess of these scuds underneath it. That's looking really good right there. And then as you get closer to the head, you can again get these wraps to be a little bit more concise and then uh, utilize these mono eyes to get that, um, that wire and your thread to really lock it into place. I'll do a couple of wraps in behind these eyes and then for extra securing measure I'll, um, I'll wrap the wire just in front of those eyes once. For this bug you're going to be adding um, resin to finish it um, but you do not want to add any resin to the underside of this because you'll keep those legs moving nice and freely in the, in the water as you retrieve it. And then just helicopter that uh, wire out of the way and give a nice clean whip finish to lock lock it all in place behind those mono eyes that'll, that'll help um, keep it nice and secure trim your thread off at this point and then we're going to go ahead and uh, closely trim the, uh, the scud back material and then as well we'll get that little underbody tinsel out of there be careful not to trim off any of your uh, your front little breather feelers there um, and then go ahead and pick out any loose errant fibers you want them all kind of generally sweeping down underneath this fly uh, so you can pick it out until your heart's content i get to be a little bit of a perfectionist with my ties um, but the fish they'll get the main profile you'll be moving these things at, at a decent rate uh, the trick with scuds is to fish them uh, with quick, abrupt, short, like one inch pauses, one inch, or sorry, one inch strips, and then a pause. And usually on the pause, that's when these trout will come and hammer them. So quick, one to two inch little strips, jerk, 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 and then pause, and then just get ready for a, a good, uh, a good take. You do want to upsize your tippet, uh, depending on the size of fish that you think you'll be catching, uh, because they will hammer them very hard, very aggressively. Uh, they love these things. Now for the finishing touch, I'm going to apply a little bit more of this classic golf resin just to the back. What that's going to do is lock those um, wire rib sections in place, and then um, it's really going to make the back of this bug stand up, give it kind of a 3D uh, look to it, and then you'll be able to see right through to that little egg sac and uh, with that iridescent ribbon tinsel uh, it'll shine through like crazy and catch a lot of their uh, their attention for sure so smooth that out till your heart's content make sure that it's nice and even on either side of that scud back as you get to the head and the tail of this bug um, kind of just taper it so that it's a nice uh, seamless flow and then hit it with your uh, uv light as well make sure that it's nice and uh, and cured properly and guys, that is pretty much it. It's a little bit more of a detailed bug. Fish are going to love it. Um, that orange bead really stands through. 
I want to thank you guys so much for taking the time to follow me this 15 minute video. I want to give a big shout out to uh, Togan's Fly Shop, Semperfly as well. Thank you guys so much for your support. And if you guys see me out on the water, please feel free to stop by and say hello. Thanks again for watching.